Hello everyone. A man and his wife were quarreling one morning. The wife said, Outside the house you behave as if you are a lion and inside the house you are just like a mouse. The husband said, That's absolutely wrong. I am not a mouse. I am a mouse trap. You are a mouse. Mouse traps don't run after mice to catch them. The mice themselves come and get caught and that's how it happened with us. Friends, sometimes arguments and disagreements over small things lead to division and discord in our families. We argue, we fight, we yell and scream at one another. And then in one way or another, we learn to forgive and reconcile for the sake of peace. Far from offering comfort, Jesus in today's gospel warns us that he has come to set the earth on fire and cause division, splitting families apart. This is one of the most shocking declarations that Jesus made regarding himself during his ministry. Friends, why did Jesus say that he has come to set the earth on fire? Fire is mentioned many times in the Bible and it has been associated with God and his action in the world and in the lives of his people. However, it can have many different meanings depending on the context. For instance, fire is often used to describe the power and presence of God. Sometimes it is used as a metaphor for God's wrath and judgment. Fire is also a common symbol for purification and cleansing. For example, Prophet Malachi uses fire to describe God's purifying love for us. So different scholars have interpreted Jesus' declaration, I have come to set the earth on fire in different ways. Some scholars suggest that Jesus was talking about the judgment that he would bring on earth. Some are of the opinion that Jesus was referring to the baptism of fire that John the Baptist had prophesied when he said that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit on fire. Some others view that the fire which Jesus longed to cast upon the earth was probably in reference to his gospel message. The core message of the gospel is that God has loved us from the beginning of time and he proves his love for us by giving us the best he has to offer his only begotten son to die for us. Friends, I too believe that Jesus was talking about his mission to ignite the fire of God's love in his disciples and then in turn enable them to be on fire themselves, ablaze with love for God and others on earth. Jesus wished to set God's burning love within the hearts of his disciples and through that love renew and transform the face of the earth. At the same time, Jesus also spoke of the pain and suffering with which he would be baptized. He was in great anguish because he knew that the flame of God's love will be lit and his mission accomplished through his suffering and death on the cross. Friends, what did Jesus mean when he said that he has come not to bring peace to the earth but rather division? Jesus' words seem to contradict the Old Testament prophecies and Jesus' own proclamation of himself. For instance, more than 700 years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah had foretold that Messiah would be a prince of peace. When the angels announced the birth of Jesus to the shepherds, they declared, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace for those who favors. Friends, during his earthly ministry, Jesus instructed his disciples to preach as they went about and wish peace on any house that was worthy. After forgiving and curing the sick, Jesus gave them his peace. After his resurrection, Jesus often greeted his disciples with peace. And the apostle Paul wrote his letter to the Ephesians that Jesus came and preached peace to those who were far off, meaning the Gentiles and to those who are near, meaning the Jews. 
To the Colossians, Paul wrote that Jesus made peace through his blood shed on the cross. And the apostles went about preaching the peace of Jesus Christ. So, if all these references in the scriptures portray Jesus as the source and promoter of peace, why did he then say that he has come not to establish peace but to cause division and disunity? In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus moreover said, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. It is not peace I have come to bring, but a sword. Friends, sword in this context does not imply bloodshed. It is rather reference to the word of God, with the writer to the letter to the Hebrews says that it is sharper than any double-edged sword that penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joys and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. That is to say, the word of God has the power to penetrate to the heart of your person and cause a change in the person's life. Yes, the word of God can inspire us to transform in such a way as to make us challenge the evil around us which then can cause misunderstandings, friction, division and problems in our families. It is because in our own family there are people who may not believe in God and His promises, people who may not follow God's commandments, people who may not take the Bible seriously and those who may not accept or spread the truth. Therefore. Contradictions arise not because Jesus came into the world to bring division and discord, contention and war, but because division and contradictions arise inevitably from his coming and because of his message of love and grace. Friends, what are the lessons Luke wants us learn from his gospel today? 1. At our baptism, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which has been given to us. In other words, when we are baptized into Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit kindles the fire of God's love in our hearts. It is important to keep the fire of God's love burning and if need be, rekindle the fire of our passion and love for Christ and all the people around us despite suffering, troubles, afflictions and hardships. 2. Friends, as we hear and read his word, we will learn and know for a fact that if we hold fast the confession of faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful, true peace is possible despite all odds, particularly in our own families. It is a great comfort to know that we do not lose out when we follow God and keep our eyes on Him. Amen. God bless you.